Oh, hey, B, it's your boy Big Beard B, and we back for another edition of Big Beard Business. Today, I have a quick video for y'all hitting you up, pew pew style, with a quick one. And today, we're covering five fragrances that I love, but not at first sniff. <laughs> that should be pretty simple, something that we haven't done before. First up on this list today is a fragrance from the house of Maison Margiela, and I really enjoy this house, but not so much this fragrance initially. You guys know me for talking about Jazz Club and By the Fireplace, but this next fragrance got no love for me on first sniff. Or second and third for that matter. This fragrance took a little time to wear on me, but now that it's there, I'm like, oh yeah. The fragrance is none other than that of At The Barber's. Now At The Barber's smells like it says, like you're at the barbershop. This fragrance is fresh, it's clean, and, and it has like this shaving feel to it, but it comes off in a very masculine way that I think really does work. If you're looking for fragrances, white t-shirt approved, spring and summertime approved, or just fresh out of the shower approved, this is one of those fragrances that you could try. Also, if you're a healthcare professional, you're looking for a fragrance that should be inoffensive, then I think that this is one of those scents because it exactly smells like you just left the barbershop. So if you can't wear this fragrance, then you can't go there after you leave the barbershop. End of story. Now, if you've been rocking with this channel, then you know the next fragrance was one that I was not a huge fan of when I first smelled it, but the next day I was like, oh yeah. The fragrance comes from Eccentric Molecules, and this fragrance is Molecule 01. Now, Molecule 01 to me on first spray smelled like a hamster cage. I was like, this wood chips. I just smell like I'm in a pet store and I don't want to smell like that. And others that allowed to smell it who were around me felt kind of the same way. However, I came back to this. It was actually sitting on a test strip downstairs in my kitchen. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was like, whoa, what is that? And it just happened to be this. And ever since then, I was like, yes, this fragrance does what I needed to do. In addition to that, I compare this with a lot of fragrances easily and also help amp up the performance a bit, but you have to be a little bit of a specialist to make sure that you are pairing this fragrance appropriately. Uh, outside of that, this is a wonderful fragrance, gets a lots of compliments in terms of just a fragrance that is big in the community and it's there for good reason. Eccentric Molecules, Molecule 01. Now this next fragrance is one that I was not, I repeat, not a fan there. I don't care if anyone told me to go get it in navigation. I was not changing. I was not turning. I was not picking it up. But hmm, I have it today. And since then, I've picked up this fragrance on a number of occasions over and over again. And also a lot of the flankers that has come its way. And I've also decided to work with the creator of this fragrance. <laughs> and this fragrance is none other than the legendary Lamar or LeMay depending on how you prefer to say it. This fragrance comes from Jean-Paul Gaultier, a phenomenal house. Um, they have a ton of these fragrance um, flankers, all right? This like over and over again. This fragrance actually had the note of lavender here. It was so different than a lot of things that I was smelling at that time. And maybe my nose wasn't mature enough for the scent. Not that this is an overtly mature fragrance, but um, this one was one of those fragrances that I could go to over and over again for the fall and winter time. In fact, uh, I think a lot of people around me were wearing this fragrance for sure. I originally smelled this fragrance because my mom picked it up for her husband. And I wasn't a huge fan of him, so that, that could have been uh, one of those reasons there for sure. But um, this one here was like, eh. And then I was able to smell this fragrance in air over and over again. And since then, I've purchased this fragrance at least four times. So an amazing scent that I enjoy from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mans. Now this next fragrance is one that I was excited to smell. And when I smelled it, I left it right there where it stood, but over time, I've come back and smelled it like, yeah, what was I thinking? But now I talk about this fragrance all the time because I think this scent does a lot. Now this fragrance is not going to be for everyone, but for me, it's a check. The fragrance comes from the house of Tom Ford, AKA Tom 44, and this one is Lost Cherry. Now Lost Cherry to me is this overtly sweet fragrance. It's sweet for sure. So that's what I felt about this fragrance. Initially, I was like, eh, it's too sweet. It's too cloying. I don't want it. But, but, oh, this is one of those things that 
grew on me. This fragrance is not going to be for everyone, but for most of you out there, you are going to enjoy this fragrance. So you have this edible feel about this scent, and because it has a sweetness to it, it also comes off as a lively scent. This is also a fragrance that you can use throughout the household with yourself, your wife, or your kids, all right? And they can wear this fragrance and get away with it. Um, this is a fragrance that I often recommend, I often wear, and it comes off as a sexy scent to me as well at this point. If you have not gotten your nose on this one, take the opportunity to do so. Lost Cherry from the house of Tom Ford. As I said, this is gonna be a quick hitter video. I'm trying something new here, and that takes us into the final fragrance on today's list. And this one is from the house of Versace, and this one is, <laughs> gonna catch you by surprise, Versace Arrows. All right, so I remember spraying this fragrance and was like, hmm, it's okay. It's good, and then taking it back, like, yeah, maybe not as good as I thought, but this fragrance does wear well. This fragrance has this mint within it. You also have, I believe, some geranium within this fragrance. It comes off as this cloying fragrance at times, but it has this nice scent trail, projection, bubble, whatever you wanna call it, it's there. Now, I know a lot of you out there may say, hey, B, it's not as good as it once was, all right? And that may be true, but you now have the other parfum and you have the parfum available to kind of fill your gaps, so to speak. But this fragrance here is still from the original collection, all right? When they released it first go around, I picked this one up, so this is like right there. So I'm getting everything that a lot of you loved and experienced and enjoyed with this fragrance, but I have it still here in this bottle. This is the first fragrance that I picked up from them with Versace Arrows. I don't know if I'll have another one that just is the EDT with the EDP I have in my collection now and picking up the Parfum. I don't know if I'm going to run out of this, but this is still a very recognizable, easily distinguished scent and one that a lot of people out there enjoy. Those are five fragrances that I love now, but we're not love at first sniff. I had to give them another try. Let me know some fragrances that were not love at first sniff to you. Comment that down below because they may also be on another list. As always, I'm your boy, Big B. B. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we are back again. And you already know what I need you to do. Just hit the gap, damn bell.